welcome to the Teaching Excellence podcast, Matt. How are you? I'm doing well, thanks, and uh, thanks for having me. Oh, you're welcome. Um, do you want to do a little intro? Yeah, sure. Uh, so my name is Matt Gordon. I'm um, an English lecturer. I do at all sorts of levels in terms of functional skills and GCSE. And I'm at Waltham Forest College up in uh, North East London. Amazing. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm just That's really right. interested to, I've been talking to so many people over, well, since March. Yeah. I'm just really interested in capturing people's stories about what's been going on, how they've been. So how have you been? I've been all right. I've been all right. I'm laughing because it's, it's been a crazy time, isn't it? I think for every, everyone, and, uh, every day's uh, or even every week, sort of seeing changes in terms of what, what's happening in the world generally, but also in terms of education and what, what we're going to do, um, or what we have been in the last few months in terms of what's happening for September. So it's been an interesting time. I shall, I've been all right to us. I feel uh, a little bit bad sometimes to many people because some, I know people have had some obviously really hard times over, over, over the period and, um, uh, and it's been it's quite difficult for, for a lot of people, but I've been, I've been okay to be honest. It was, uh, very strange to begin with, but I seem to uh, settle into the sort of rhythm or got, got my own sort of rhythm and structure within a couple of, within a couple of days or weeks. Yeah. Um, and, and that was, I suppose, not, not, not through any sort of sense of design. It was completely accidental, you know, it was <laughs> having, to, um, having to homeschool, for example, to yeah. uh, my own two kids and, and try and fit that around uh, the sort of tailored teaching I was doing in, in sort of March, April. Um, and so that kind of settled into its own, own routine. Um, and I managed to, to sort of get on with it and keep myself busy uh, through, you know, other, doing stuff for myself as well as the kids and, and so on. Um, uh, but for me, it helped give me a bit of structure because I knew what yeah. I was doing, you know, on a sort of Monday to Friday and the weekends still feel like weekends. So it, it was all right. But I know people have had quite diff different, you know, experiences and quite difficult. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's so interesting, isn't it, thinking about the whole, when I think back to March, routine just completely yeah. got blown out of the water yeah, and, we, yeah. and we became we had to find a way to settle into just something just, yeah exactly. and we didn't and we all operate very differently and we all had different things going on at home and we all had different you know although we were all doing the same thing in terms of trying to make teaching and learning still happen we all had to kind of just come together and but then find our own feet as well. Yeah, so yeah. How was how was Mar March um, <laughs> April? As you were speaking then, I was just I was just thinking it seemed like a very, very long time ago now. You know, we'd obviously yeah, seen it to be in the midst of time. I remember back in back in those days, back in sort of March, April, there wasn't that sense of um, uh, uh, there was there was no structure really, but there was no clarity in terms of what's going to happen next. We were yeah. we just started lockdown. We just we just started. Well, I just started getting into the rhythm of uh, doing online teaching, for example. Yeah. Um, and there wasn't a sense of you know we'll be uh, we'll be back to normal by this day, or we should be okay by this day. It was a kind of uh, there was no definite you know back back then. I think as as time went on, as it got closer into summer. Um, uh, there was at least a cut off point in terms of the end of teaching and then something like a summer holiday and then we would kind of, in theory come back in sort of September relatively normal. So it was it just seems like a long time ago now. But it was I I remember it being a very steep learning curve. Uh, you know, not not just, not just I'm still not I'm not sure why I'm still at the top of that yet to be yeah. honest, because it was uh, not just getting to grips with doing you know what I'd normally be doing online also kind of managing it around uh, other people's time table, like kids' school time table, for example, or just doing normal family stuff that you do anyway. And that, yeah. that went out of the, out the window in many, in, many, in many respects. So, How was it for you then going online? You know, what, what, how were you, how did you feel personally? What mm. happened with your students? How, what did that look like, feel like? Uh, sudden. Um, I was kind of, uh, I was, I was all right to begin with uh, because I've done a little bit of, of online stuff and relatively confident in, in, in terms of digital stuff. Yeah. Um, to, to a certain extent, not, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm definitely not an expert, but I'm, I'm kind of confident or maybe arrogant enough to think I'll be all right. You know, I'll, I'll get to, I'll, I'll get to know it or I'll start to use it and get to use the system quite well. So we, uh, we use, I was used Zoom before quite a bit, but we use Teams uh, at okay. college. And I've done a little bit of uh, online stuff with some of my students who were outside of class before we actually went on lockdown. So I was at least familiar with it. And that was that was kind of good because a few of my students also were 
familiar with it, and um, uh, and I'm talking about adults as well as the younger sort of 16 to 19 groups, and they'd used it in some of the uh, the main the main programs as well. So it wasn't like we'd been thrown at the deep end uh, so much, uh, but it was, <laughs> but we were certainly in deeper waters than we could yeah. see. <laughs> yeah. So we, we, we had we had a grip. We, we could see the kind of shore, if you like, but um, yeah. at the same time, it was it, it was suddenly in the sense of the change from you know face to face to to 100 online you know yeah. it wasn't a sense of a blended approach or you know get, get, get used to uh, yeah. a period it was straight uh, a switch you know from 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 face to face to online so i think we did all right in terms of um uh, teachers themselves i did i did okay the biggest problem for me was the student was keeping them um engaged you know for yeah. uh, quite a quite a long time in some in some respects uh, there's a big big difference and this is something i think most teachers Realised you hadn't done a lot of it before, but there's a massive difference in, in keeping a class of um, uh, brickies, for example, engaged in a GCC English language you know, 19th century text uh, face to face. That can be uh, a challenge by itself, but when it's a three hour online session, just, just forget <laughs> it. It's not, you know, not going to happen. Uh, so that was a big change. But that kind of, I kind of enjoyed that switch between yeah. uh, how, you, how we're going to use this stuff. Yeah, how, how did, did you tackle different. that? What sorts of things did you learn or try? Uh, lots of different stuff. There was um, all sorts of different sort of platforms and, and, and programs are using the sort of the stuff that we've uh, or a lot of people may have used before stuff like it and things like that. So there wasn't there wasn't a big jump there. But for me, there was uh, it, it was more of a case of uh, trying different stuff um, and being kind of open about it. So when it comes to something like Minty Minty, for example, or um, um, uh, Go Conquer, or those sort of different you know uh, platforms and programs that we can use. But it wasn't what we can use. It wasn't so much of, of um, this is going to be the way we're going to do it. It's like let's see how this works for this particular activity, or, or let's see this, this, how this works for this particular group. Which is, I suppose, is similar to what you do face to face. But the difference with back in March, April, we were all learning to, how to get used to it. So you know, it was, in some respects, it's the blind leading the blind. So yeah. I'm trying to get students to activity. I'm only just familiar with the software myself. Yeah, um, and I think sometimes when you share that with students, they're really okay with that. Yeah. And I think yeah. a lot of the positive stories that I've heard snippets of so far is where teachers have felt comfortable enough to try new things, yeah. just to be really open about the messiness of trying yeah. new things. Yeah, absolutely. And, and kind of being together with their students in figuring out how how that works and yeah. sometimes students have been the ones who've actually supported the process. <laughs> definitely, definitely, <laughs> definitely and what I found was that kind of helped with um, not, not really rapport, it's a wrong word, but a kind of sense of camaraderie in, in a way, yeah. um, you know, where, where students would be helping you sometimes uh, and, and they'd be able to find shortcuts the way to do it properly or, or quicker. Mm -hmm. um, also helping each other um, and I thought that was interesting but again with the younger groups where uh, sometimes the assumption uh, is that the, you know, the younger the student, the, the more confident they are with, with, with using digital uh, in, in general. And I don't, for me personally, I don't think that's true. For, for, for social media applications, yes, yeah. probably. But it doesn't mean if somebody's uh, uh, pretty okay and confident using their phone for social media applications that they can then learn online. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and, and that was interesting to see, to see that. And like I say, in terms of like a camaraderie, they were, it was interesting to see other students helping each other. Which is something in class they wouldn't normally do, or wouldn't you know, be the first to to to, 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 I, to volunteer them. So yeah, like that, so. I think that's a biggie. You know, there's a few things that keep cropping up in my mind, which are around how we really build a sense of community with mm -hmm. digital digital learning, and I think you know the other bit of it is. We need, we've always got that thing in the back of our minds about if you're interested or you, you know, you're, you're thinking about pedagogy, you think about how you have, you know, you set challenging learning activities or challenging engagement in learning mm. and you know not to make it too hard um, and, and we shouldn't be making it too easy. But what we now have that layer of is also thinking about the tech that goes yeah. with that. Yeah, I think I think it's a good match to have the content and and method of learning that sets you know the right amount of challenge yeah. so that really effective learning happens. Definitely. But it's also a really nice space for students to work things out together, which builds connections, doesn't absolutely. it? Absolutely, absolutely. And there was a lot of uh, sort of positivity uh, 
around that as well. And again, that that was interesting to see happening with the adult groups and some of the older older learners, learners within the adult group. There was a more of a sense of a community getting used to to the tech. And I think in some ways, and this wasn't wasn't planned, but it was I think one of the very positive things to come out of it. Uh, it, it helps students or learners, I should say, become more involved in learning yeah. because they were, you know, participating or helping each other or even me when it comes to, you know, finding a, a certain, you know, click on the right part, for example, or no, it doesn't work if you do it like that. Uh, that engaged conversations about the, the actual learning we were doing um, at the time, even though it was technically nothing to do, but, but it, it helped, you know, it helped yeah. really develop that sense of being engaged, really. So yeah. it worked out, it worked out okay. Great. And what would you say were your biggest, maybe surprises or positives that came out of, of the last acad- the end of the last academic year? Um, that's a good one, really. Uh, there were quite a few. I wouldn't say like a, a big surprise or um, something that was a massive shock. Massive shock. It was more a series of small <laughs> shocks yeah. as we as we yeah. went on. And I think the uh, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to turn political, but the, the uh, how can we say it? conversation, the dialogues that were happening over, um, uh, for example, GCSE results or, or functional skills results that were happening over the tail end of uh, sort of May to June, and obviously then into over the summer period as well. Um, that was a, that that's been I suppose a bit of a shock or a bit of a, a, bit of a surprise yeah. because and I don't I don't know whether others have been in, in a similar. Um, sort of mindset to me on this but it, but what we did in terms of the English department uh, or, we, or my colleagues for example we took the whole thing very seriously in terms of uh, GCC being one example so we took the whole, whole thing seriously in terms of what sort of evidence have we got how can we justify a particular grade you know whether it's a good or not so good grade how, how are we going to get to that point so we did a lot of thought and a lot of work behind that um, right. and, I, and I think a lot of schools and colleges did the same same sort of thing mm. and so when it when everything started changing, uh, when it came to sort of early August, uh, uh, that was a bit of a shock uh, in the sense of it's great to uh, have a great deal of trust put back on back on individual teachers or in individual institutions. That's that's fantastic. It was also a bit of a surprise, um, but it also I think put, uh, or this, there was a sense of for some teachers that were kind of pushed out there in in the sense of uh, we had that screening or protection, if you like. That was Final decision to be made by the exam uh, bodies or, or, or whatever it happens to be. Well, it feels like it's come back, uh, uh, back on the teachers' sh- t- teachers' shoulders now. So I think for me, that was the the, the biggest um, or, or series of small shocks that led to a yeah, like, towards the end. That that was really hard, wasn't it, for people? Mm. You know, there was so much going on. There was so much change, and yeah. and people. There's a lot of responsibility. Had- yeah, mm-hmm. and they have people uh, have done a lot of work. Time. Yeah, yeah. Um, they have done a lot of work, and they, and there was a sense. I know in some of the conversations I was involved in, that real sense of responsibility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, absolutely. But ultimately, like you say, that a bit of sort of you know welcoming of of the responsibility coming back to the teachers and their judgment, yeah. which you know is what we're professionals at the end of the day. So you know. The people who put the work in, I think they'll have bit of been a lot learned in in through those discussions. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but what are you? Um, where are you at now? So just to uh, timestamp um, our recording, we're first week back um, in in colleges this week for most people. Um, what have you? What are you going to do differently? What have you learned? How are, how's the prep gone for this week? It's, um, well, going back to this idea of changes, um, we were all guns blazing for over the last week or so to start teaching from, from, from next week, basically. So my, my time will kick, kick in from, from Monday. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, uh, uh, that's changed. So now my teaching doesn't start to about the 20th, kind of around 21st. Okay. So what we've done is push our start for, for English and for maths uh into into another two weeks yeah um and we've got a kind of long induction going on as well as the start of the main the main programs yeah. um and that's quite a big change for us i know it's a big battle won by my um head for example in this mm-hmm. camp, in maths as well because it's something we've been looking at over the last couple of years for enough yeah uh, it's always a bit crazy beginning of term and we've always uh or the last couple of years i would have been you know, there for, for a few years myself but there was a sense that a lot of students, even some of the teachers, dare I say, needed a week or two just to kind of bed down a bit 
yeah. uh, in normal circumstances I'm talking, but, uh, before they got to grips with the initial mass uh, side of things. So we've always wanted a little lower delayed start, and now we've got it. <laughs> it's, it's a big shock, because uh, uh, we were also planning on, on different types of delivery. So we're, we're looking yeah. at blended, you know, blended online stuff, as that there one is, uh, a little bit of face-to-face and kind of um, uh, rotating groups and things like that. And that's all we pushed out of the window now as well. Okay. So, what it, to cut a long story short, I was I was planning on face to face with online um, uh, supplementing, you know, yeah. asynchronous kind of learning using Teams, using uh, all sorts of recording um, uh, stuff like Zoom as well, some mini videos and uh, all that kind of thing. Yeah. And I think that will still happen, uh, but the difference or the big difference for me now is that we uh, I will be seeing my students uh, on a weekly basis, but on a rotation. So I'll see one group on one week and then, uh, and then everyone else will be online. And yeah. I'll see that, that particular online group face to face with the other lot yeah. um, online. So it'll switch. And I think that is, is a good idea, to be honest. Yeah. It should work out quite quite well with us. Because we, you know, being English and Maths, we're kind of even feeling effective. We're moving around the main the main timetables. And obviously, with some subjects like the claim I mentioned earlier, it's the really limited sort of things you can do online. So those students are naturally going to be in college a lot more yeah. than um, some other like, you know, guys doing computer studies, for example. Yeah. Um, so we've been prepping quite a bit individually and basically have thrown up our scheme work into the air, uh, what we'd normally do. Um, and uh, in terms of what's landing is a focus on what are what other skills are going to be needed, how are we really going to tackle <coughs> excuse me, this particular cohort, which is different to so many other cohorts over the years, where they've had that gap in learning, you know, they've had that three months or more where they've done very little English GCC or Math GCC or indeed anything else. Mm. And they're coming out of this uh, uh, central assessment grade situation as well. So they've yeah. come out with you know, possibly not the grade they were looking for or hoping for, mm. with the background of being out of full time study for, for, for several months. Mm. Um, so uh, uh, I think one way to describe it is, like I say, so we, we've touched our skin, our normal skin work out of the window, and what's, what's landing, and then from, I've got a meeting later on today about this. Is how we're going to get them, how we're going to tackle those particular skills uh, that we, we know that come up every year, that are going to over year when it comes to exam prep, but how we're going to account for those other gaps in learning that are, uh, and, and what are they? Because obviously we don't yeah. really know yet. So we, I think the, 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 the importance for us is going to be on the quality and consistency of the initial assessments um, uh, with, with students coming in, but also not throwing exam type. Uh, um, you know, tasks at them straight from, from day one. So it's it, hopefully, dare I say this, but hopefully we make the, the subject a bit more fun. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, at least for the first term or so. So it's not, you know, oh my God, I'm sitting in the GCC English class, I don't yeah. really want to be here. More of a, this is actually quite interesting, and we're kind of learning for learning's sake. Yeah. And and not, not to hide it, uh, but, but to kind of screen, if you like, the assessment that's going on, the teacher's assessment, the you know, long paper assessment to find out what, what are the knowledge gaps and what are the skills gaps per, yeah. per student? And you do that all the time, you know, that's, that's yeah. any year. Uh, but I think now it has to be a lot, uh, a lot deeper level and, and sustained over the, the whole first term. Yeah, and it's really, it is really an opportunity to rethink everything and see how we can do things differently, maybe more yeah. meaningfully, more impactfully, more fun. Yeah. And um, without, I like that you said that, you know, without just worrying and reverting back to let's just stick really rigidly to past papers and yeah. exam practice. And, yeah. and actually it's a really nice opportunity to look at what are the real skill development? How can we do that differently? Yeah. Um, how can we, you know, again, um, there's been quite a bit of discussion about that initial assessment and, and it being really detailed or, or really, um, really conscious yeah. to make sure that there is a real picture that is done with the students not to the students exactly yeah. and they yeah. then fully understand what that means for them and what therefore their skill development needs are but also an opportunity for them to express how they feel about that time not in school and yeah you know, how they feel about English and how they feel about maths and what would really benefit them. Because um, I think we're all, 
you know, a, a little bit guilty of going into a new year, going into sort of um, known practices. And, yeah, and exactly. it, it's intense, isn't it? So I think if we can find that little space to breathe and um, one of the quotes um, that's from uh, a book, that's a quote that someone shared with me, and I'm going to forget the name of it now that I'm talking, um, <laughs> but it's about letting the fresh air in. Yes. And I, I, re yeah. I really, um, really loved it. That that it was a bit, it was longer than that, but yeah. um, it was about finding wiggle room and letting the fresh air in, and it re it's really stuck with me yeah. because I think if we can create that that space and let the fresh air in, we could potentially do things that are more meaningful for both students and staff, um, and hopefully use innovation and efficiency to support well-being and, in, and engagement. What, what I'm hoping out of, or one of the things I'm hoping for out of everything that's happened last, last sort of three to six months is, and I don't know what, what, whether you feel about this, but I feel a similar way, but basically there was, or there used to be a sense six, you know, seven, eight, nine months ago where uh, uh, online you know, pedagogy or just even using deadline learning, uh, blended learning for some, for some practitioners and, and even for some students was um, it was an additional. It was a it was a nice to have, or it was a bit of a gimmick, or you know it helped with helped with some things, but it wasn't serious learning. It wasn't you know uh, as serious as sitting in a classroom, you know, uh, yeah. in front of the whiteboard, so and so on and so forth. And I, I hope, and I think what I did see a little bit of uh, over the lockdown period uh, was a kind of shift in people's you know, thinking about that. We're thinking actually, it's not we're not we're not doing it. Uh, we don't, we're not going to have to do this in September for the sake of it or to tick yeah. to, to a box. It's, real. It's, we have to do it. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, not, it's real. It's it's gone beyond. You know, is it relevant to, <laughs> to being essential? And yeah. I think, and I think that's for me. That's one of the positive things. I hope uh, maintains momentum over the next the next couple of months or yeah. maybe next year. That it's it's a really useful additional tool uh, that we can use for any any subject really. Yeah. Uh, and, it, and it's up to us to make that. Uh, interesting for ourselves as much as it is yeah for definitely you know. and I think people have the, the amount of sharing that's been going on across education yeah. has been great hasn't it and um, you know I always I've had um, over the last couple of weeks I've had a couple of online meetings with um, quality managers teacher and learning mm. managers and we were definitely or I was you know definitely leading a conversation that was about let's think about pedagogy first yeah. but let's keep it quite simple and quite straightforward so choose five key pedagogical approaches yeah. that are going to really help make online learning um, at least good yeah. and then let's master them and and let's let's design it as well with the students let's keep getting lots of feedback yeah. from the students because I think if we set off um, with this you know all singing all dancing teacher learning approach online that gets you know, too much for staff in terms of pressure or yeah. too technical or too yeah. complex for students. Or distracting sometimes as well, you know. Everyone's <laughs> going to just find it a little bit too much, whereas I think if we decide on some real core four or five key things that we're going to really together figure out, I think then you will, you know, assessment for learning, it would be one of them, for example, that, you know, if we can figure out how to do that really well, meaningfully, um and and in an engaging way with the students whether it be in class or whether it be online that's really going to benefit our planning for the learning as we go definitely. along isn't it definitely i mean in some ways it, it makes it more more challenging and, and yes it probably is a bit more time consuming for the, uh, for the for the average sort of teacher as well but it's i think it's it, it also makes it more worthwhile in the short medium and long long term and something you said earlier with that sort of key proposition for me is with we're doing this with the students, uh, you know, whether it's it, it developing a, a scheme work, or developing even a resource, or developing a particular tool, whatever it is, it's got to be with it. It's got to be in collaboration with uh, with the with the individual learners. And as, as you said again earlier, there has been a lot of that between practitioners over the last couple of months. There's been crazy amount of CBD that's been available and for free as well, um, which has been great. I'm not yeah. complaining. Uh, and there's been a lot of sharing and discussion there. And that that sharing discussion needs to 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 involve the learner as well, and now that we're with them, if you like, or back with them, 
uh, in, yeah. in September. That, it's a perfect opportunity. It's <laughs> perfect. And I, you know, we don't need to overthink it all. We just need mm. quick, easy ways to gather feedback from students and then act on it. Yeah, you know, exactly. It's not about collecting it for quality's sake or to write a report about it. It's about, first and foremost, to do it with, get the feedback from the students, alter our practices, take things out that are not working, put more things in that are working and think about it from a pedagogical approach that's going to be really impactful yeah. for me. But And then the things that you do can be used to write a report, you know, over here. But actually, first and foremost, it's about the teachers and the students and that, and that dialogue between Absolutely. them. And it's been a lot of responsiveness as well of what you what, what you do, you know, whether it's the material or even the teaching style or even the platforms you're using, it's about being responsive to, to your learning and that's what we're what we've been trying to do, that's what we're reading a lot of the textbooks when it comes to teacher training and it's you know, and I think now is a is a, is a perfect opportunity to, to, yeah. to do it. Definitely. Well, thanks for joining me. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. It's been, it's been great just to catch up, chat to you, and um, absolutely. Hopefully, people will you know benefit from from the chat as well. So yeah, see you soon, Matt. Cheers. Take care. Bye.